a graph from Desmos that shows us what's going on. Y equals X squared is the red graph, which I've restricted the domain from zero to one so that we didn't get confused by the rest of the parabola. And Y equals X is the blue line. So we want to rotate this region around the line X equals negative one. And there's two ways to do it. You can use the disk method or washer method in this case, or you can use the shell method. And that's what I've illustrated right here. And this should convince you that either method gives you the same answer, 1.57 approximately. So let's talk about using the washer method, which is right here. Washer method is pi times the definite integral from, well, we use the phrase outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. And when you're using the uh, washer method, your typical disk or washer is perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So we're visualizing That is our, well, the distance from here to here is the outer radius of the washer. And the distance from this axis of revolution to the blue line is the inner radius. And so we want to come up with the expressions for the outer radius squared, the inner minus the inner radius squared. And we're integrating along the y-axis. So this zero is this zero right here. And this one is this one right here. All right. So the equation of this red line is y equals x squared. But we like a an expression for the x-coordinate of this point right here, which if we solve this for x, we get x equals the square root of y or y to the one half. And so the distance from this point to this point is, well, Right minus left is the way I think of it. Y to the one half. That's actually for each Y coordinate right here on the interval from zero to one. This distance right here, all the way to the red line is Y to the one half. But then, but we're really going from negative one all the way there. So it's right minus or left no right minus left so y to the one half minus a negative one really represents the length of the out, outer radius of this typical washer and that's where this is y to the one half plus one the quantity squared that's the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared well the inner radius uh is the distance from here to here, but the uh, x coordinate of this point is in terms of y is just y because this is the line y equals x. So the distance from this point to this point is right minus left or y minus a negative one or y plus one, the quantity squared. And so to actually evaluate this by hand, you'd have to square this binomial, square this binomial, combine similar terms. Looks like the one and the, the one and the minus one would cancel out. And then find an antiderivative term by term. And then evaluate from zero to one and multiply by pi. I'll leave that to you. By the shell method, a typical shell would look like this. And the formula for using the shell method is 2 pi. And by the way, the shell 
when you're using the shell method, a typical shell is parallel to the axis of revolution. And this is the average radius for a typical thin shell. And the height of the shell is top minus bottom. And we're integrating, these shells are going this way. So we're integrating along the x-axis, still from 0 to 1. And so the top of the shell is x. The bottom of the shell is this distance right here, which is x squared. So top minus bottom gives us the height of a typical shell, which is this distance right here. And the average radius is this x coordinate, take away a minus 1, x minus a negative 1 or x plus 1. And we have to multiply that by 2 pi. So again, we would multiply, if you had to do this by hand, you'd multiply these two binomials together, integrate term by term, evaluate from 0 to 1, and then multiply by 2 pi. And you might actually be able to get an answer involving pi instead of uh, getting these decimal approximations. It sort of looks like this might be the value pi over 2, but I'll leave that to you. Thank you.